Greetings everyone. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to use a combination of disassembly and debugging to deobfuscate obfuscated shellcode. So the shellcode that I'm going to be using is here. So all I have is a simple string of opcodes. Now, throwing this into something like IDA to disassemble is kind of a pain in the butt and really more effort than it's worth. Luckily, there is a good free online disassembler that's good for quick and easy disassemblies like what we're doing here, and it's diffuse.ca, and I've used this in previous demos. So you simply go to diffuse.ca, and then click on this online assembler disassembler, and then you can paste your shellcode in here and click disassemble. And so now we have our obfuscated shellcode in mnemonics that we can read and potentially make some sense out of. But as you see very quickly when we go through this, the disassembly is not clean. There are a lot of instructions here that make no sense, there is this bad byte, there are these individual bytes here, so clearly we're dealing with some kind of obfuscated shellcode, and so now we need to go through it. So as we read this fine, we have this push to the stack, pop into ECX, okay, good enough. Then we have this call 0x7. Now that's kind of strange. Now one thing to remember is that a call is simply a jump with an expected return. So essentially what this is doing is jumping to the absolute memory position 7. Now where is 7? Well, this gives us the hex offsets uh, from the start of our disassembly. So we have 0, 2, 3, 8. 7 is not at an instruction boundary. This is an obfuscation technique called a branch into instruction. And this stymies disassembly by jumping into the middle of what the disassembly is interpreting as an instruction boundary, thus having a cascading effect of ruining all future disassembly. So in order to bypass this, we need to start our disassembly at position 7, which is essentially here at this last F, because this is 8, and so therefore this is 7. So what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to remove the first 7 bytes from my disassembly and then start again. So now we have this disassembly, which you notice is completely different than what we had before, but it still doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. We still have these individual bytes here, we still have this badness, but now we can see increment ECX pop into ECI, and then an XOR here, and then a loop, and then a jump. So, although we can go through this manually, trying to go through byte by byte, figuring out exactly what this is doing, it's really much easier at this point to toss this into a debugger so that we can step through this instruction by instruction once we've figured out this initial branch into instruction obfuscation. Now, in order to get shellcode into a binary that we can then toss into a debugger, there is a free tool called shellcode.exe.py which, for the sake of ease, I'm tossing into a Kali VM because Kali has Python 2 built in. I provide this script in a link in the video description. Additionally, in order to run this script, it requires a library called inlineegg, which you cannot simply install using pip. I have also included that in the same link. And then this shellcode.txt simply has the shellcode that I'm running. So I can run this by doing python shellcode.exe.py dash s to pipe the file and then uh, shellcode.txt. Now, in order to run this, you typically have to specify what operating system and what architecture you want, but the default is Windows and i386 or x86, which is what I want. So when I run this, you'll see it says writing file shellcode.exe. I have my file, and so now I can toss this into a debugger. So I'm going to move this over to my Windows VM and then start up x64 debug to actually do my shellcode debugging. Okay, so now I have my binary tossed into x64 debug, and you'll notice as you look at this code that it looks nothing like the shell code that we were looking at before. And the reason for this is that x64 debug is default, default behavior is to stop at the system breakpoint, which is of course to prevent things like TLS callbacks from happening before we hit user code. So to get to our actual code, we need to go to debug run to user code or alt F9, and now this looks like what we saw before. Here is our branch into instruction. Notice it is calling 401007, which is in between 
these two instructions. So now we can begin our debugging process. So F8 will step over, F7 will step into, so I'm going to step over these first two instructions. Then I get to my call, I want to step into my call. And note that X64 debug is smart enough to automatically reanalyze the code to account for the fact that there is essentially a new starting point for the instruction boundaries. So here is my INC ECX and pop into ESI. Here is my XOR and then here is my loop and now I'm going back to the XOR. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to keep bouncing back and forth between these instructions and you'll see that as I do this the instructions around here start to change. So what the shell code is doing is it's pointed itself to the end of its shell code and it is XORing to essentially decrypt itself in memory as we're going through this. And you see as I keep doing this it keeps going from back to front, rewriting itself in memory. And as this is happening, x64 debug is constantly changing its interpretation of the instructions because the instruction boundaries and instructions keep changing. And once we get to the end of this, you see there it just made a huge amount of difference in what kind of sense it makes. Now we're almost to the end. And there we go, now we've essentially reached the end. At this point we've broken out of the loop, we now jump to 25 and then call back to 12. And so now we have the actual shellcode that is being executed. Note here you see the hello world string in ESP. As we keep going through this, it's popping from ESP into ECX, clearing out EIX, moving 4 into EIX, zeroing out EBX, incrementing it, zeroing out EDX, moving F into EDX, and then here it's going to do int 80, which is the syscall instruction in Linux, which of course is not going to work because I'm doing this in Windows, but we know that because 4 has been moved into EAX, that the syscall that is going to be executed is syswrite, and it takes its argument in ECX, which points to the hello world string. So this heavily obfuscated shell code, all it does at the end is simply print hello world to the screen and now we have finished debugging it and now we can see that. So there you go. That is how to use a combination of disassembly and debugging to deobfuscate obfuscated shell code. Thanks for watching.